Yeah, it, 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 adultery in French food is an interesting thing because it's always, there's no set thing. It, it, American movie, the lesson of American movies very often that uh, we think we're having individual experiences, but in the end, we realize that our experience, if we decode it, is actually, actually exemplifies a general principle, which is essentially a moral principle that if we only took on faith, we wouldn't have had to do this decoding and go through this misery. Whereas in French movie, adultery means something different depending on the circumstances. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes it's an in-between thing. It's just a different way of looking at morality and life. Or another way to say is that the Europeans are very decadent at, uh, yeah. and we're very moral, which I don't think is really true. But it's just a different way of just looking at, at human behavior. It's totally, just a totally different way to see it. You know that, I mean, the minute you get out of the United States, you encounter a different, completely different reality. Not a better reality, just a different reality. And you just see that there, there, there's more than one way of seeing life. And, uh, and that's, you know, what we get from, from, from these movies, especially if you've seen a lot of them from like one particular country, and you say, oh, I get it. This is how people are looking at things. And, and so the treatment of men is shaded by the, 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 a certain uh, quality. When you stand outside of American culture, you realize that, that American film is very male-dominated. I mean, like way, way male-dominated. Uh, Julia Roberts is in a movie called Eat, Pray, Love, which is not all that great. I kind of liked it, but it's not, it's not all that great. But she'll probably be nominated for an Academy Award, which wouldn't be a tragedy, but she'll be nominated for an Academy Award because she'll be one of about 10 performances that plausibly could be nominated for an Academy Award. At the end of every year, I, I, I've taken entire years. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look at like 2000. And I look at the entire year, every single American release. And in 2001, that's, that's one I remember, there were 19 movies that had starring roles for women. 19 out of 400 American releases. And some of them were like Mariah Carey in Glitter, which is not going to be nominated for an Academy Award, or Kirsten Dunst in uh, Crazy Beautiful, which is you know, a juvenile type film, it's not going to be nominated. And so then, you know, some people say, well, how come that and people ask me, like like I'm running the show, you know, like I'm, I'm in charge of things, they'll say, How come Nicole Kidman got nominated for Moulin Rouge? Well, because she was in like one of the nine movies that you could have been nominated. The whole trick is getting to be in the movie. Once you're in the movie, which is like, you know, one out of a hundred or hundred two hundred chance of getting in it, then you have like a fifty percent chance of being nominated for Academy Award because there's nobody there. And by the way, for supporting actress it's even worse because every movie you know, every guy has a best friend, he has a boss, these are all guys. He has a competitor, he's a guy he hates, a guy he's trying to kill, a guy he's trying to kill him. These are all guys, and then he has a wife. That's a, that's a best actress possible nominee, but of course she won't be nominated because it's a lousy role. And there won't be even a supporting actress in the entire movie. That's why supporting actress is like the worst category, always. And supporting actor is always the best category because it's, it's just a huge pool of possible contenders. One more question here, and I think that we'll have to uh, put the next one. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because um, there was a point where um, I believe it's when he's up there and he's teaching the students, and my husband looks at me like, uh oh, and I say, oh no, there's different types of love. <coughs> and then it turned out to be. So, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was really kind of disheartened by that. Well, but, but within that same old thing, there's all kinds of love. You know what I mean? It's this isn't just lust. I mean, these are people who are in their forties, and this is like a soulmate thing. And uh, this is all kinds of love. But and you know, there's all. It is the awkwardness of uh, of of uh, the flesh that there are all kinds of spiritual unions, and then kind of one way of expressing it, you know? 
this, this, is, this is how it works. And, and the older you get, it becomes a little bit more interesting because, you know, Romeo and Juliet can have love at first sight because everything they are is on the surface, you know? They look at each other and they can see each other because there's nothing else. There's nothing inside, it's all on the outside. Whereas, you know, people who are 45 years old, I mean, they are the product of so much that has happened. And, and they're, but basically they are left to, uh, to deal with the uh, predicament of love and the, by the same uh, crude means as Romeo and Juliet.